Welcome back. Right now, a group of Native American high school juniors is in Boston participating in the annual pursuit program of Wings of America in partnership with the Boston Athletic Association and Harvard University. The students are visiting colleges, sightseeing around Boston. They ran in the BAA 5K and, of course, will experience the excitement of the marathon itself. Joining us today are Dustin Martin. He's executive director of Wings of America and part of the Navajo Nation. And Patty Dillon, a three-time runner up at the Boston Marathon, a National Distance Running Hall of Famer from the First Thank Nation <laughs> Mi'kmaq Tribe and a coach for the Wings of America Elite Program. Dustin and Patty, thank you for being here with us. How are you today? Oh, thank you, thank you. This is wonderful. We're, I'm doing great. Okay. Thank you. Good, good, good. Now, there's a long history of Native runners uh, in the marathons, and mm. including in, in Boston, Tom Longboat, who was the first Native man to win Boston in 1907, and Ellison Tarzan Brown, whose 1936 race was part of the story of the naming of Heartbreak Hill when he passed Johnny Kelly and went on to win. Let's talk about how Native history is woven into the fabric of the Boston Marathon. Dustin, let's start with you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the first Boston Marathon, they say, is 1897. And by 1901, Mohawk Bill Davis was runner up. Uh, yeah. After him, you got Tom Longboat and then Andrew Sock Alexis in 1913, uh, going up to Tarzan Brown in 1936 and 1939, and then our very own Patty Dillon um, with her three time runner up. So, uh, in that very short history of that race, there's been a lot of Native champions or runners up, um, and they've represented their nations proudly and have seen the, the world of running change a lot as well. Many of those people were not uh, really able to be pro runners in the way that we see it today, uh, but were still very successful in that race and were competing against the best in the world. And why were they not able to be pro runners like we see today? Uh, well, for example, uh, Tarzan Brown was a stonemason, you know, and it's said that there were times where he would kind of pick and choose races or places that he got in races based mostly on, on the prize. and what that was worth for his family because you could pawn it or sell it afterwards and um you know it, it was really running was something that came from his culture that he was encouraged to do by his coach bum stanton who was a former chief in there against the tribe um, and his running talent was identified early um, but life was hard on the res and uh you know running running was something i'm sure that offered him many ways to get through that uh, financially as well and, and that comes to, to prize money and i guess in that way maybe professional running is similar but people can't dedicate their whole life to it they they got to go back to other things and in tarzan's case it was hard labor and yeah. in these days pro runners uh they really focus on and I, obviously the assumption the, the assumption is that some of the um uh, uh, advertisers, supporters were not uh, drawn to uh, the native runners uh, in the time when they were uh, in their prime, uh, like, like we might see today. Uh, Patty, let me ask you, the starting line in Hopkinton is on indigenous tribal ground. Do you think the BAA has done enough to acknowledge the history of natives in uh, the marathon? Well, they are starting now. As a matter of fact, there was a uh, later today, there's going to be a panel, and it's going to be on Native American running um, in the Boston Marathon. And they are doing, um, have already done, I think, um, a land acknowledgement where the race goes through the 26 miles and the towns that are on indigenous land. Um, so, yeah, this is a beginning. It's, it's a countrywide Thing that's going on right now and this is the beginning and and it's really great to have talks about it and you know the beginning of, of land because it's not only the land that comes in it's the cultural and society it's everything that's all involved and what ha not only what happened to us the native americans and how we were pushed out and starved and and here we are here we are here um, we're we are doing today. great Telling this story. Dustin, tell us yeah. about the Wings of America program, which you lead, but uh, you're also an alumnus of the program. Yeah, you bet. Uh, so Wings is based now in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We've been around for almost 35 years and really focused on promoting running for Native Americans. Uh, Patty, you have a very unique uh, story. In the beginning, oh. that 
I'm sorry, we have a bad connection. I, I kind of uh, stepped over you. Finish, Dustin. Oh, I was just talking about wings and the way that we promoted running for Native American youth for, for Great. 35 years. Uh -huh. So here in the Southwest, um, and, and very strong in, in the Southwest, but really aimed to celebrate that nationwide. And so in 2016, we were asked by the BAA and Harvard University to come to Boston and celebrate the 80th anniversary of Elson Tarzan Brown's first win. Um, and from there, I was able to, to work with the BAA and our wonderful friend there, Suzanne Walmsley, their community outreach director, uh, to talk about, well, what, what next? Okay, well, What's a great we're celebrating effort. 80th anniversary, but is there a way for, for us to bring students back and went to I'm the so Canada glad that they're here. The, the pictures look great. It looks like the kids are having a great time while they're here. Patty, you have a very unique story about participating in your first marathon. It wasn't something that you had uh, actually planned for. And in 1980, you were the first American woman to break 230 in the marathon, and you set several records over the years. So you really are iconic in the Native American running community, and you're coaching other elite runners. Tell us about what it means uh, to you. Oh, what it means to me. Oh my gosh, it's such an honor and it's so precious. And I didn't start running to be any kind of forefront pioneer person at all. <laughs> I started running for very selfish reasons, um, not for traditional reasons, but they ended up being more of that of late. I, I started to, to run, you know, like a lot of people do to lose weight and to get my life in order and be happy. And it's not so much the happiness um, it's a deep sense of joy and satisfaction, and I didn't know that I had a gift of running. People call it a gift, and I, I don't see it. However, um, I have a, I was raised with a good work eth ethnic, so I worked really hard. That's great. <laughs> so Dustin, no matter what I did, Dustin so Patty, you know, running is great. Dustin and Patty, thank you for joining us to give us just a hint of the history of what's been going on uh, in the Native American community.